Now, the popular social media influencer Ollie London has renounced his life as a trans woman and detransitioned after stating he allowed God to enter his life. The star tweeted God first on his account and condemned gender ideology as a cult after posting his support for author J.K. Rowling. It comes as part of a trend in recent years of young people detransitioning and blaming a lack of balanced guidance and safeguarding on their decision to transition to the opposite sex. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by the man himself, a social media influencer, Ollie London. Ollie, thank you for giving us the time today and coming into the studio. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I don't know where to start because it's such a complex story, but I suppose I'll start with your faith journey and, and ask the question, has your faith, your recently found faith, had an impact on your transition and all of that stuff? So I was always an atheist my whole life. And, um, you know, I've always been lost with my identity. Mm -hmm. I've always struggled looking in the mirror and just, you know, struggled with who I am as a person. So, you know, the last few months I was feeling lost. I felt like I needed guidance. Mm -hmm. So I started going to um, a Catholic church and just attending the Sunday services and just kind of feeling the atmosphere. And it was just such a welcoming place. You know, people were very kind, very friendly. Mm -hmm. um, people just, you know, wanted to be nice to me. You know, and I spoke to the priest there and they gave me some advice um, and they actually gave me a copy of the Bible. So I've been studying, especially the Proverbs. And I just I just feel like it's a very motivational thing. And sometimes we get to a point in our life where we become lost and mm. we need that guidance. So for me, going to church and finding God has given me guidance and a yeah. kind of light in my life that has made me realize, look, I should be the way that God made me. I should be happy with who I am. I shouldn't be constantly chasing this kind of unrealistic idea of perfection. Yes. And also it, it, uh, going to church has taught me that, you know, I should give back to others and try and use my platform and my audience to try and, you know, spread good in the world, you know, speak yeah. up for people that are otherwise silenced, like children in America that um, have a lot of pressure at the moment to transition from a young age. So, you know, I want to kind of use my platform to do good. Well, I've followed your journey quite a bit and you've transitioned into several different aspects. Um, and, and it seems you've detransitioned on, on both fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, but would, you, would it have helped you if someone like me would have sat you down at the beginning and said, look, God loves you for who you are. God loves you as you are. You don't need to do any of this. It would have really helped me. I feel like I was very lost. You know, I have a very loving family. I have some amazing friends, but I kind of sometimes a little bit crazy. You know, I just go with whatever my head is telling me in the moment. Mm. And, you know, I'm one of those people that I'm kind of easily influenced by trends. So if I see something online, you know, I kind of just go for it and fall into it. So, uh, yeah, if I would have had someone like you, um, especially with your wisdom and your guidance, kind of teaching me these things and saying, look, you shouldn't be chasing these unrealistic ideas. You know, I feel that would have really helped me um, with myself and you know, with my growth as a person. I think that's important because with the conversion therapy ban, we're looking to stop people praying with each other and offering support in, the, in that kind of way. Mm -hmm. and I think that would be damaging. But do you think there were enough checks and balances? Do you think there were enough safeguarding questions in place before you went through with your surgeries? And, and if you could tell us how many surgeries you've had as well, that might be helpful. So I have done a lot of surgeries. So I started in um, 2013 um, in South Korea. Um, and I was just want to say a prayer as well for the people of Korea today because of obviously what happened with the tragedy yesterday. Um, so my heart is, is with them. But yes, my journey started there and I've undergone 32 surgeries in total, right. mostly facial, but I've also had liposuction on my body as well. So, you know, I've gone through a lot of physical and emotional pain to do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've come to that point now where it's like, you know, what more can I do to find happiness? This has not given me happiness. And, you know, I've always had, you know, for the most part, good doctors. I've had a few that kind of pushed me into it or did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You know, recently I've had some really great doctors and they always give me a psychological evaluation before. And you, they see that I'm doing it because it gives me confidence, it gives me happiness. But, you know, I, I have realised it's not normal. You know, 50 years ago, people weren't doing all these crazy surgeries and now it's almost become a norm that, you know, you know I kind of feel bad that I've been sharing this with the world because maybe some people would have been influenced by me. Mm. So, you know, that's another reason I'm going to church to try and redeem myself and become a better person. Okay. And, and to just to be clear to the audience who, who might not have seen your journey, you transitioned uh, from, from one gender to the other and you also transitioned to a different race, didn't you? Did either of those give you any sense of fulfilment or were you still constantly chasing that? You talked about finding happiness. Were you still chasing that it really was just a temporary fix you know I was just lost with my identity I was bullied as a teenager so I was just really lost so I think I kind of I love the Korean culture I love the Korean people and I think you know I wanted to identify with Korean people because that gave me happiness you know that gave me something in my mind that just made me so happy <laughs> but you know I've realized now that that's not normal uh, it's not healthy and you know I've been getting help for that and stuff and 
again, finding God and reading the Bible has just made me realize, you know, all of these things, all of these changes are not important. It's just about the person you are inside. If you have a good connection with God, yeah. you can finally find that eternal happiness. I wish you'd have found God earlier, but I'm happy that you have found him. And Before I, the surgeries, I wish as well. <laughs> but you got to where you were supposed to be. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Ollie London, social media influencer. I'd like to end the show with a collect of the week. To, today it is almighty and most merciful God of thy bountiful goodness, keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things that thou wouldest have done. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Calvin's Common Sense Crusade, and we will see you at the same time next week, 2 till 4. There's fault. Up next is Nana Queer.